to truly master the throw barbarian, you need to do target practice every day, at least five hours a day. Practice makes perfect. Just keep spinning around those axes. Don't stop throwing. Unless you run out of ammunition. <laughs> Hello everybody, today we are taking a look at throwing barbarians. So the only way to really go ranged is to go with throwing weapons as a barb. You can easily do this using Lacerator and War Strike, which is some pretty common weapons for this build. Lacerator has a very nice proc and War Strike just has pierce. And they both come with a very important replenish quantity which helps a lot. So um, yeah, let's show some gameplay. I prepared a player 8 pack down here, and I think there was an elite pack as well. Yeah, there was an elite pack. So let's uh, see how good you can throw axes at players 8 elite packs. <laughs> This build is definitely okay on players 1, but as you can see, the damage is, I wouldn't say bad on players 8, but yeah. <laughs> At least you are able to lead health pretty well and your mana as well. So, it's just gonna take a while, but as you might notice, I already ran out of ammunition now. And I just switched the weapons before I started the recording. It's just very annoying with the quantity. And that's pretty much the downfall of the build. Having uh, weapons that run this fast out of quantities, as they're called in Diablo 2, is just a big problem. Um, I don't really think this build is ever gonna be a fan favorite for anyone, just because, again, the quantity issues are very annoying to deal with. Having to switch out weapons so, so often that you almost... Uh, have to carry extra weapons in your inventory or at least just as just makes for a very clunky build but if you want to experience the throw bar you know actually going arranged with a melee class then this is the way to go so with the downfall of the build explained let's move on to the actual guide let's cover the gear first Laying up hands just for a really nice amount of damage. Um, you could go with Rakul's, but you are able to lead pretty well regardless. Then we are using two special rings, and it's quite impo important that they both come and resist either poison and cold if you want to cap the resistance completely. One of the rings should have faster cast rate on it, attack rating, and dexterity as the best roll. And the other ones should just come with Mana Leech, Dexterity and Cold Resist. Those are the perfect stats. Then we are going with a Rock Belt, Gore Rider's Boots, Eve Lacerator. Um, Lacerator comes with this Amplified proc which basically doubles your damage. It also comes with other decent stats but it's mostly just the proc. And then the War Strike to kind of round up the build. Um, the cast no one striking is kind of fun, but it's mostly just for the piercing and also very fast attack speed. And then a nice little enigma, an Ariad's face. I socketed this one with a increased attack speed duel, but I don't really think I needed that regardless. But yeah, just pick whatever you wanted, like an imp room if you don't have resist on your wings. And then a Hylot's wrath. And on switch we use a herd of oak and a spirit. Now, why all this faster cast rate? Well, on switch, plus the normal gear that we're using now, we are able to reach 105% faster cast rate. So we are able to teleport around very fast. This makes it for, you know, an ideal PVM build. You could, of course, go with something like um, String of Ears. Maybe even experiment with Razor Tail and no War Strike, anything like that, you know, going more melee kinder on the gear. But I like teleport, and being able to teleport very fast for PvM is super good. This also makes it, I wouldn't say good for PvP, but <laughs> yeah, you could at least uh, 
uh, find yourself being able to do that as well, I suppose, just for the fun of it. And then the inventory, just whatever grand charms you can get with the tag rating. They don't have to be any good at all, they can be very low rolled. Mine are not that good, just for the purpose of the video, not trying to make the build too overpowered and so forth. So yeah, that pretty much covers it for the gear. Okay, so let's move on to the stats. I get just enough strength for my Enigma. In my case, I did choose a wrong base. So if you get a Mage Plate, you can put a lot less strength into that. And then get much more Dexterity. And Dexterity works just like on a Bow Amazon, where it increases both the attack rating and damage. So it's very strong. And then just enough vitality to get like 2500 health after battle orders. And a note here, I do believe due to there is a bug around double throw, I don't think my attack rating is actually that high as it seems. So this might be a cheating number, at least that's how I understood it when I was uh, looking up things, but um, yeah. 11,000 defense when we are buffed up as well with battle orders, that's very nice. And almost, you know, 10k max damage on the Lacerator. So, the damage, you know, it's okay, it's not the worst one. And, but yeah, I'm just a bit worried about the attack rating number, because it could seem like I maybe need something to increase it, if it's actually not as high as it seems. And then again, due to using these two special rings here with poison and cold resist, I'm able to cap my resistance. Using Ariat, you know, I could go with Gulliam's Helm, which gives you no know, more offensive stats, but eh, I don't really need it that much. And it's kind of nice using Ariat for the all resist, and obviously all the other very good stats it has. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the build then. One point into these uh, pre quests here, and then we are maxing battle orders, and one point into battle command. One point into axe mastery will help on damage, so definitely take one point and no more else. And then one point, or even sorry, maxing throwing ma mastery, obviously. And then one point into these ones here. Natural resistance is always just so very strong, you know, when you're planning out gear for a barb. And then you think, oh man, how am I gonna cap resistance? Oh yeah, natural resistance. 58 all resist just from one skill, it's very strong. And then combat skills. Maxing double swing and maxing frenzy. And then due to this bug about attack rating that I mentioned before, we are only putting one point into double throw, because apparently it doesn't matter how many points you're putting into double throw, it's not gonna help. And then we can take Berserk just to deal with physical immunes, maybe to more single target, but meh, I took it just for flavor. But yeah, I should probably also explain uh, why we're actually maxing Frenzy. So when you're using Frenzy, your attack speed is going up by a lot. So it, I just want to hit like two or three times with Frenzy and then start throwing axes. That's pretty much the rotation. And that's why we are maxing Frenzy. Yes, it's 20 points, but where else would I put those 20 points? So it's actually pretty good. And we can also, you know, go a bit more melee if we wanted to. Um, yeah, and also just the run speed is actually pretty fun as always, throwing those axes like a madman running around. <laughs> and then faith and fortitude for damage. The um, Fanatism Orange is very important again for attack speed and damage attack rating, everything it does. It's just very good to boost your own damage. Even though, you know, physical immune reapers tall and stuff, it's kinda nice, but yeah, we want the attack speed. But um, yeah, I think we uh, can move on to the gameplay now. So, very simple. You basically just buff up, and then you, yeah. And then you're ready, you know, you just keep frenzy up and spam double throw. And when you need to teleport, it's easily done, even without switching weapons. At least uh, that's kind of how I like to play. I don't really always bother switching out to my spirit shield and whatnot. Oh yeah, I'm talking about that, of course I should uh, remember to use that as free buff. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's go for it.
And as you can see, once your friends is up, you're just really running very fast and whatnot. Ha, <laughs> mana burn can be a bit annoying. Yeah, this one is also stone skin, so it's not the nicest one to kill. It's gonna take a while this pack there. They will rebuild the mad. Yeah, you are pretty mad. You can see these pit lords die a lot faster. Oh man, look at all the maggots down here. What the hell, man? There's a lot. Let's uh, have some fun trying to kill this. <laughs> wow, there's many maggots. But yeah, one lightning throw, he could have finished this off. <laughs> And this is even again, you know, it's one player, so this is a uh, kind of unfortunate that I can't even seem to clear through that fast. <laughs> but yeah, this is also a fun build, so you guess you can't really expect it to be that strong. Still, <laughs> this is uh, pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Have to switch out my weapon now as well, so I'll just do that. But look at the attack animation, it's very fun just how fast you're attacking with those axes. And also just the, uh, you know, the, the lightning Noah looks pretty good. It's definitely a very flashy build in that regard. And now I'm already out of quantity on that one as well. <laughs> it goes so fast. Uh, let's try to move up just a little bit to the throne room or something. <laughs> just look at those axes flying. It's very flashy. But yeah, yeah, as you can see by now, even though we have pretty good gear, you know, it's not the cheapest to gear to get. It's definitely also not the easiest to get. We're still not able to really perform well. Um, I also want to mention that it's actually kind of hard to aim the axes. You know, they're such a small projectile. It's not like they have a long uh, splash range, if you get what I mean. Um, it's like uh, ice blast, a fireball, or something. When it connects, it's also projectile, so you have to aim it. But at least when it connects on a map, it's it's exploding or at least hits more uh, targets. Whereas axes are kind of small objects. So, some closing thoughts on the build. I think there is a reason why I've actually never seen a throwing barb in game in the game that I have at least played online. I don't think anyone has ever played a throw barb in the game that I have been in. And there is a reason for that. It's just not a very popular or even strong build. Like there's many other fun builds that are actually much better than this one. As you can see, just like just one of these Horatrum engines, you're just standing there throwing axes for such a long time before it dies. And that's just one mob. There's really little or no AoE. Of course, there's Pierce. You know, it does Pierce a bit, but like even that alone is just, yeah. <laughs> it's just not very strong at all. But I will say, however, for style points, you know, something that's very unique and cool. This is definitely the build to go for. And uh, you can just quickly test it out on this one, the frenzy up. I mean, the single target damage is there. It's okay for single target, but this is an RPG. Every build has to do RE of some sort to be competitive with others. That's kind of the deal with uh, this sort of game style where we need to cleave down mobs. And I will also say that Putting that money points in dexterity and not really leeching, you know, such a big amount of uh, damage. Maybe with the cools it would be a little bit better, but yeah, um, you are kind of fragile. Um, I just don't think it's maybe worth to put that money points in dexterity, but then again, the attack rating will be a lot less than, and I still am worried about the attack rating thing uh, going on, where I'm actually afraid that I'm hitting a lot less. Um, 
one thing I should probably also mention since I'm focused you know on end game ultimate gear very often this build will actually benefit a lot from uh, full swapen I think you can get some really 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 insane full swapen and actually make great use of them on this build so if you are you know a wealth, wealthy weaver uh, yeah uh, whatever you whatever your name could be um, then you should maybe consider buying uh, folds for this weapon because I really think that this build could uh, uh, utilize folds a lot better um, than other melee builds of the same sort of class because a lot of um, other classes could benefit very little from it compared to say using a grief or last wish or whatever so yeah and as you can see in this little you know run I took down here I'm already out of quantities on my uh, lacerator yeah, that that mechanic alone is just annoying I mean in the guide that I have in the description uh, below um, he talks about having three waypoints in his inventory to switch out because apparently two waypoints are not enough to switch out uh, it's just very clunky <laughs> but yeah I hope you enjoyed this very different build um, I definitely haven't really wanted to make one uh, before, so I'm happy to just kind of have Hillary to, to, to try this out. Um, and also, you know, it would have been pretty hard to get an Eve Lacerator and an Eve Wars Reich, while the rest of the items are pretty doable to get. You know, it's not too expensive a build. Uh, those two weapons could be a, quite a problematic thing to trade for. But yeah. I think I want to end it with that, so yeah, thank you for watching and have a good one.